Welcome back. The Auditor General, Sir Kana Malaleka, says there's been an overall improvement in national and provincial government audit outcomes. In other words, she says, there's been an improvement in the way that government entities are managing their money, or your money, and reporting on that management. But she says there's still a problem with consequence management. Too many organisations are not implementing consequences for people who don't perform their roles properly. How many times have you heard an Auditor General say that? At the same time, this audit period has also seen the implementation of changes to the Public Audit Act, which means the Auditor General has more powers. Linda McComa is the National President of the Association for the Advancement of Black Accountants of Southern Africa. Linda, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time. Thank you for coming in. Firstly, so it's an improvement. Is it a significant improvement? I mean, must we take this seriously? I think, uh, firstly, thank you very much for having me. Warm welcome to your viewers. Um, when you look at the breakdown, I think the statement makes it quite clear that while there is an improvement, we need to look at the departments or the institutions that actually are high impact in our country in terms of service delivery and the things that are really needed for the, the country to work. So that's the concern that the Auditor General does go on to, to, to raise, that there are institutions that are key to the mechanisms in the country that are not doing very well financially and lagging behind. So when they do talk about an overall, it's kind of an averaging out of some of the smaller ones that do do really well, but the bigger ones really need to kind of pull their weight. Do we know why some do better than others? And I mean, I can imagine that's quite a big question. <laughs> but do we know why it is that some people are now finally improving and others still aren't? Is size a problem? Look, I think we already know that our state-owned entities are problematic. So already are your question is answered from that perspective. We know that we are working in a space that has political interference and all these other elements in the environment where if professionals are not given the room to actually do their work, you might find that the things that need to be done are not done. So there are a lot of factors that come into play, but ultimately we are pushing for the fact that there are professionals who should be ethical, who should be following legislation and so forth. But in these bigger entities where you know that there's corruption in our country, there's all these other elements, that could be a reason why. But we need to be pushing back on that as professionals. You'd like to think also professionals, if they do well in one small area, they get promoted. Mm. They might hold the same position, but go to a bigger one. What I'm trying to get to is that if we start to see improvements in some places, we might build some momentum. We could, but I think there's always the semantics at the, at the back of everything. So even if you get a small entity, you might be able to get things done there, but in a bigger entity with all its complexities, it doesn't mean that just because you're there, Stephen, from a smaller entity you did well, it's going to also ripple effects there. There's so many other factors at play. Uh, this is going to be a complicated question, but does having better audits actually mean that there's better service delivery, or does it just ma mean that an organization is managing this one part of itself better? Very good question, very important question, and the AG does address it in her uh, presentation. To say a clean audit doesn't necessarily translate into a service delivery that is satisfactory. So sometimes um, you need to go according to the legislation what you need to do. But remember, we are working in the public sector. And there are certain decisions that might go outside of the parameters of what is a clean audit, but you have to motivate around those. So some people stick to the plan because they want the clean audit, but you might be missing something that you could have done for the public interest. So there's a balancing act that needs to happen, ultimately. There's also managing numbers and managing sort of what you own. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one of the things the Auditor General points to is construction projects it's a mess. Um, and, and I know that's not an auditing firm. Maybe it should be. Um, but, you know, they're huge problems. And then there's a complete lack of preventative maintenance. Mm. So I think, the, you know, the construction industry has always been yeah. a, a problem. So if we need to look at how are we auditing these spaces, and even the auditors can't really, you know, fix everything. The real thing is around what the AG is saying, around an, e an ecosystem of accountability. They're the people that are there on the ground the whole time. So if you're talking auditing, that happens at the end. Perhaps now it needs to grow into the internal auditors and the counting officers and all of that. But at the end of the day, it comes back to what I said originally. If the environment is not conducive for things to be done according to how they're supposed to do, be done, then we, we're not going to move mm. in, the, in that regard. If I remember my um, auditor, Auditors General correctly, we've mm -hmm. got uh, Sakana Malaleka, we had Kimi Makwetu who's yes. passed on, we had Terence Nombembe. Yes. All of them have said there's been a lack of consequence management. It's the phrase that comes through again and again. Wait till the local government audits, because we'll hear it again then. Yeah. Why is that still such a problem? It's just not pulling through at the top. And there's the political interference in some of these things. So you might know what to do in terms of the consequences, but it's about who's implementing that and um, who are the people that need to be you know, dealt with in that regard. So there's just a whole ecosystem and environment that has political you know, you know, considerations around are you really going to be able to implement the consequences? And that's what we need to work at and figure out 
where is the political will, where is the leadership will to get that done? I was going to ask you if it was political, you went straight there. So definitely it is. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. Is it ever going to change then? I mean, you would like to think that, I mean, the thing about money is that numbers shouldn't lie. Mm. And that if they are sort of lying, you'll be able to find that out. That's mm -hmm. kind of the point. That's why we have people like yourself and people like the Auditor General. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's the whole point. Um, and it's easy to sort of say, well, you know, they don't lie. Mm. It seems, I sometimes wonder, if people are getting almost better at managing the numbers, unfortunately. Well, you know, there's always materiality in everything, I guess. But I think the, the, the culture shift strategy that the AG keeps talking about is saying the accountability and the change we want to see is not only going to be with the officials that are in these institutions, but how they are articulating what is happening in the audit, auditing space to the layman on the street for us to all be part of citizens in finding the solution and making a change in our country. There's a big technical fight brewing. I don't know how involved in this you'd like to get, but there's a big technical fight brewing between the Road Accident Fund and the Auditor General. I say oh. brewing. It's in the Constitutional <laughs> Court. Um, so as, as I understand it correctly, the Auditor General said to the uh, Road Accident Fund, you're not managing your money properly. Mm -hmm. The Road Accident Fund says no, but we use a different accounting standard. I had a conversation with Macintosh Paletta representing the Road Accident Fund on, uh, uh, about two hours ago. I don't think he and I will be exchanging Christmas cards this year. Um, the Road Accident Fund basically seems to want a different accounting standard compared to everybody else. Who's right here? Well, I must say that I have full confidence in the Office of the Auditor General and the AG herself and her team. And I think mm. they've shown that they really are cut up for the job. So I would really implore that our public institutions listen to the Office of the Auditor General. And I think it's unfortunate that we have to go to the courts when we want to deviate from things. Let's listen and work together to find solutions around some of the things that we need to get done. But ultimately, it is the supreme um, organization for, for accountability, and I think we must respect that. If you get bored with auditing, I think diplomacy may be open <laughs> to you. <laughs> Linda McCormack, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for coming in. The National President of the Association for the, for the Advancement of Black Accountants of Southern Africa.